injury issues. There have been suggestions that your training sessions have been too intense for the players. Have you had to adjust the intensity in training at all over the season due to the injuries? No, but we don't train too hard. And we need to be fit. Uh, this league, uh, this needs the standards in this league, and you need to be fit. And otherwise, you can't match the standards who are required in a game. And that we don't train too hard. I know you brought some coaches with you from Ajax and Mitchell and uh, an analyst as well. In, in hindsight, would it have been more prudent to have brought a fitness coach as well? A lot of managers bring fitness coaches. Is, is that something that you lack here? No, we have, I think we have good departments here. We have good people around uh, with a lot of knowledge and we are based on, on data and we make our, um, our decisions. James. Uh, Eric, just obviously on the schedule, I mean, last season you just had a crazy number of games, like a marathon season, and the first half of this season also just so many games. Since, since the turn of the year, I think you've had 13 games in 91 days. You had 22 over the same period last season. You're not playing every three days now. It, is it in this situation where the injuries are a bit more of a concern for you, that you, you have got longer periods between games, but you're still getting the injuries? No, because uh, I know that it still has an effect. I had uh, the huge number of games we had in the last 18 months that it still has an impact on our squad and on, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, accumulation. the accumulation, exactly, uh, on the players. Yeah. And, and so just on that, I mean, it, it's literally, this is just something as a top, as a manager of a top level club with an ever increasing congested calendar, you're just going to have to have to find ways to manage as best as you can. Uh, you need very robust players. Uh, that is the requirement. Um, but as I say, well, when you go uh, where we are around Christmas, we were in the situations with a lot of injuries, and yeah, and then you have to bring them back. But in the moment they are uh, free from injury, they are not going uh, be match fit, and then they are not straight back into the form that also needs a couple of games, yeah. uh, and before you get back in the rhythm. So yeah, what I say, it still had an impact. And do you need? I mean, like some like. You say robust players. I mean, Bruno plays every three days all the time. He's constantly fit. And you look across different teams in different leagues, they're the same. Do you need more play, more robust players like Bruno going forward? I think we have more players um, who are very robust, uh, so as Bruno is. Uh, but yeah, that is the type of player you, you need, yeah. yeah. Um, just back to an earlier question, which you didn't really answer, that the number of times we've seen good performances where we think to turn the corner, i.e. Liverpool, then to have such a disappointing performance. Fans don't really understand why that keeps happening, what is going on in between those two games for that to happen. Oh, but I uh, explained several times, it has especially also to do, we, we, we don't have a consistent team. Every time we have to adjust and then there are not the routines who should be. And every t uh, that is because you have to adapt your team and uh, people dropping out. And so now, once again, we have to adjust our team. Well, that team you had out at Brentford was a very good team. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's a very, it's a very good team. Uh, but uh, it was this, uh, we started in the same lineup as against Liverpool. But yeah, uh, there you have, and you see that more after international break, that with many teams, the rhythm is, go uh, is, is gone away. Uh, because they are, they play two games uh, in a different, with different teammates, with different way of play with in different systems. Well, Eric, Chelsea have been through a situation where they had new owners, those new owners made an awful lot of changes and it hasn't really worked out if you, if you judge it by their league position. Do you think there's a warning there for the new owners here that making a lot of changes doesn't necessarily mean good changes, that sometimes stability can be the way forward? Uh, I think you need, um, uh, uh, you need to follow the process and uh, so, yeah, as I say, we are in a good trend line. Uh, they are coming good young players through. They are developing very, very well. Uh, so the progress, but I just uh, telling we are in a good way. We are in a good direction. Yeah, and, and now we have to make the next steps and uh, don't interrupt this process. Uh, Richard. Uh, 
Yeah, hi Eric. Um, going back to Mason Mount, um, when you first became interested in him, were you surprised that Chelsea were willing to sell him, particularly to a rival like United? Oh, they, I don't think they want they wanted him to uh, they wanted to sell him. <laughs> that is, uh, they want to keep him. Uh, they offered him even a new contract uh, many times, uh, but he wants to make this step. And yeah, we uh, we were f uh, we were and we are very pleased. Hey, he's a Man United player because he has great abilities, and I'm sure he will he will contribute, and he will become a, a big player for Man United. Chris, hey Eric, um, you mentioned earlier about the overload of work and fixtures, and just before about the fact that maybe what we're seeing now is a throwback to the World Cup in mid-season last season, and the the weight of fixtures and work last season. Do you think the football has to learn that you can't just keep going back to the well over and over again, that players need a break and that you can't keep hammering them like they have been hammered this past 18 months? Uh, yeah, well, we discussed it uh, early on, absolutely. Uh, it uh, Anywhere uh, the people, uh, the players get overloaded and they can't bring the performances anymore. Uh, and we are, we are already, I think, over the point and what we demand from our top players. I mean, if it doesn't change, obviously, it's only going to continue like this, where you're going to have players getting hurt, fans not seeing top stars out there yeah, playing. Yeah. So it is. You see this weekend eh, when Man City is playing without Walker, without Stones. Eh? Then also you see the level is dropping with them. Eh? There was a different team as we faced them uh, in the weekend. And, yeah, and so, yeah, the levels from teams eh, will dropping and the moment if we keep going on in this process, we are now in by overloading uh, the international programme. OK, last two, Paul, Dave. Paul. The club's been, as you said earlier, looking into why you've had so many injuries. How confident are you that that's not going to happen again next season? Or, or is it a possibility because of the, the schedule and the number of matches? Uh, you, <clears throat> you can't 100% avoid this. It's impossible. Uh, there's always... Yeah, you are... Uh, you are depends on certain facts. Uh, um, so also uh, we have national teams. Uh, so five times a year, uh, you give the players away, and you don't have any any impact. Uh, uh, it's not completely true. With some national teams, we have very good connections, and we uh, we manage the programs. But there are also others that they do what they want, and it's not uh, you don't have anything in hand what they are doing there. Um, you're probably going to have to win every league game left now to qualify for the Champions League. Would it be a failure for you and the players not to make the Champions League, or is there mitigation and an understanding from the, the new, new people in charge here about the injuries that that, that, that could be a reason, a factor behind it, and therefore, it, you know, it's it's not as easy as it as, as it would appear with a with a fully fit squad. I don't know, and actually, I also I don't care. But I have high standards, eh? and yeah, I would be disappointed when we will not qualify. And I know it, it will be very difficult because we are not in a good position. Eh? But yeah, we want to win every game, and that is the standard uh, we have uh, among each other. And we will keep we, we will keep uh, going and keep uh, being in belief and helping that standard. Eh? And that will be the approach from every game. And, and we will keep fighting till the end. And yeah, I, But I know we are not in a good position. Um, we have to catch up. And also, I know yeah, we have had a lot of problems. And that's also, yeah, I'm also realistic. And man, and when uh, in a competition where it's so com competitive and the teams are so, uh, it's so close from levels with each other, yeah, then also, and you have to, um, uh, you need the players to be available and, and to make a consistent team to uh, bring the routines in, in your way of play. And yeah, that uh, is depend the results. That is, um, uh, that's a fact. And if you can't do it, if you are every time you have to make compromises, you will drop your levels, you will drop points. When you can uh, play a, a consistent team, Hey, your levels will going up, and as we discussed before, when you can bring uh, the best players in your squad, yeah, you will collect more points, and that's uh, that's a fact. And so, yeah, I will be realistic, but 
Nevertheless, I will keep fighting uh, till the end for every game, and I will demand for every game a win because uh, we are united, men united. Uh,